You need to stop using Dribble and Behance as your primary sources of inspiration immediately because if everyone's getting inspired by the same websites, then everyone's work just starts to look the same until eventually you're just another freelancer whose work looks like everyone else's. But it's not just about looking the same, there's actually a load of flaws and reasons why you shouldn't use Dribble and Behance all the time for your inspiration, especially if you're trying to level up your designs. This means that you can't see how the designs function in the real world and if you've used Dribbble as many times as I have, everyone knows that not only can you not view the live sites, a lot of the time you're just getting a screenshot and these are technically really nice websites but everyone knows that they wouldn't convert, they'd be hard to navigate and ultimately they're actually just for display on Dribbble. And another thing is you can't search for specific interactions or animations. So if you're looking to try and do a specific animation on a site, like for example, the other day, me and Jade were making hire cards for our new website and we wanted a specific interaction for these hire cards and we couldn't find this anywhere. I mean, if you search hire cards on Dribbble, you are not gonna find what you're looking for. You're just gonna find a load of vague career websites and all that kind of stuff. So if you wanna search for specific interactions, specific animations, and like actually find like a specific thing that you want to be inspired by for your website, you really aren't gonna have much luck on Dribbble and Behance. So I'm Jordan from Island Web Design, and in this video, I'm about to show you a load of secret inspiration websites that are way better than Dribble and Behance. And these are the actual websites that I use to inspire all my designs. And I'm currently designing and coding over 10 websites a month for our clients at Island Web Design. So trust me when I tell you that these designs convert. Now, all of these inspiration sites are a bit more niche, a bit more specific, and I'm telling you now, make sure you stay tuned till the end, because I'm actually gonna show you the number one top inspiration website that I use. And personally, I think that just this site on its own can completely level up your design skills. And these sites that I'm about to show you are way more specific and way more niche. Instead of having big libraries of websites like Dribble and Behance, we're going to look at a load of specific stuff like hover animations, 3D websites, interactions, dark mode, bento grid. There's all sorts of stuff here. And these are the actual websites that inspired our world-class designs at Island Web Design. So you're going to want to stay tuned till the end because the one resource that I'm going to share with you guys at the end is my number one inspiration site. And I personally believe that this website alone can level up your design skills instantly. And before we get into those, let's get into one more big misconception, which is detrimenting load of designers. And this is way worse than having shit inspiration. And this is the fact that everybody thinks that design is art. Design is not art. Art is creating something from scratch. Art is starting with a blank canvas and literally creating something from the ground up. Design is collating a load of existing styles and things you've already seen together to create something effective that solves a problem and is hopefully high converting. And once you learn the difference between art and design and understand that you're not trying to create something from scratch, all of a sudden staring at a blank figma board becomes way less intimidating okay so yeah first one here is actually one that i use the most often now like i said to you guys i'm keeping the one that i use most often for the end because it's actually like an awesome tip and something that's going to really help you guys with your design skills but we're going to start with the next site that i use the most often and this is css design awards now the reason i use this site so often is because this site is absolutely full of world-class designs but unlike dribble it's not saturated down with things that aren't websites because to be honest i'm only here to look at websites and also you can actually click the link and go view the websites so if we just have a look here Previous WOTDs is websites of the day. So it's kind of set up similar to the awards website, which by the way, isn't on this list because everyone recommends that. But yeah, it's kind of set up similar to the awards website. You just got a load of top websites here. People can buy sponsorships based on the stuff as well. You can submit, search and all that. In the menu, you can go through nominees, winners, have a look at the judges and all that kind of stuff. But the main thing we're here for is just to look at the inspiration. I'm pretty sure this is site of the month, September, 2024. They have ratings and all that kind of stuff. But in reality, you're literally just here to come see what you like, see what is within the style of what you're designing, pick something like I am here, and oh, so there's actually a countdown timer on these now, which is cool, I haven't seen that before, but I imagine that's just your time until you can vote, and I will give you guys a quick tip here, actually. On all these inspiration websites, if you upload your work, if you get featured on these websites, like for example, on Behance, if you submit your work to Behance, every piece of work that gets submitted to Behance, the Behance team look at, but only once. So if you submit your work and then you made an error, so you delete it and upload it again, they aren't gonna look at it again. But Behance's team will always look at all of your, everything you upload. And if you get featured on their homepage, I actually know of a girl on YouTube who said she got featured on the Behance homepage and got 50 leads in a day. So that is like a really great place to get exposure and it's where the best companies in the world are looking for the best designers in the world. So anyway, that's a top tip for that. Um, so yeah, if we look at this site here, we can basically just see the judges and the scores. But the best part about it is you can click on it and actually open the live website. You can go through it, you can see how this is gonna look on mobile and all that kind of stuff, which is really something Dribble is massively lacking in. So that's CSS Design Awards. And the next site, which is way similar to CSS Design Awards, I use this one for pretty much all the same reasons, is Site Inspire. Now, Site Inspire may technically be a little bit better. Um, Excuse me, but yeah. Sick thing about Site Inspire, right, is the navigation. So it has all of the other benefits that I just mentioned from CSS Design Awards. But you can also search by like really specific search queries. So you can search by style, we've got big type, black and white, 
colorful, corporate, editorial, grayscale, grid layout, the list goes on. There's a massive list here, as you can see. You can also search by type, so agency and consultancies, annual reports, awards, websites, blogs, there's all sorts of stuff here. Search by subject, advertising, animation and moving images, agricultural and building projects, architecture, art, automotive. I mean, the, like I say, the list goes on. And then you can search by platform. Uh, Cargo Collective, ReadyMag, Shopify, Webflow. So if you want to come and you're looking specifically for a Shopify website that's bound by Shopify themes, then you can just come and filter out the Shopify websites. And the same again, you can sponsor them, you can get advertising on here, and I'm pretty sure you can submit your work once you've signed up. Although I don't have an account, so I wouldn't know. And the next one, which is actually something I found out about really recently, is bentogrids.com. Now, I do want to give you guys like a little sort of disclaimer here and just let you know that things like bento grids and that, these are trends. They are not evergreen. This stuff is probably going to be in fashion for like a year. Uh, and bento grids, to be fair, have been in style time. And then all of a sudden this year, everyone started saying they were a trend, even though they have been around for ages. But you want to aim to be more evergreen than you do to follow trends like this. So I would say if you're going to try and make bento grids, don't make the really original ones that are like in style right now. Maybe just use the general bento grid and card layout to create your own unique layout like we kind of did with the Guernsey Eyes website, which I would recommend going to check out. So you can check that out on our portfolio on our website. So yeah, let's look at Bento Grids. And this is literally just a massive collection of loads of Bento Grids, loads of Bento Grid designs. There's absolutely all sorts here. And the sick thing about this, right, is you can have a look at graphic design, web design, or even animations. And as you hover over these, you kind of see the interactions and animations. So there's all sorts of stuff here. And this is really modern, up-to-date stuff because Bento Grids is a really modern, up-to-date style, right? And not only that, if you see at the top here, get Bento templates free, you can get a load of free Bento Grid templates. I'm actually going to leave a link in the description to the templates that we use for Bento Grids in Figma. So if you guys want to use that, feel free to check it out in the description. And you can also here switch between dark mode and light mode. So if you want to see a load of light mode Bento Grids, you can. You want to see a load of dark mode Bento Grids, you can. And this is really helpful when you're going for a specific style because if you search for bento grids on Dribbble, you're going to find a load of bento grids, probably the same ones that everyone else has seen, but you're also going to find a load of other stuff mixed in that you don't really want to see. So, oh, and also I'll give you guys another top tip here. If anybody wonders why it's called a bento grid and what that actually means, when you eat sushi, the box that you eat sushi out of is called a bento box. The grids are laid out the same way and that's where the name bento grid comes from, right? Anyway, next one is landing folio. Now this site is actually sick because if you guys are like me and you're not like web app designers or mobile app UI UX designers and you're more like traditional web designers that design proper websites, which is also why we use Astro, by the way, and there's more about that in another video, then this landing folio website is going to be perfect for you because not only do they have a load of Figma components and stuff that you can use, which isn't what this video is about, so I won't go into it, but they also have a massive library of inspiration of all sorts of landing pages. And these are like traditional websites. You're not going to be bogged down with a load of UI UX stuff and branding stuff. You've just got a load of sick websites in here. You can see what they were actually built with. So you can see here HTML Tailwind Figma and then they have Tailwind and Figma components. You can also filter here by if you want to see like Webflow ones, Tailwind ones, Bootstrap ones. But if we actually click into one of these, you can see here you get the full preview of the site. Oh, sorry, I just went back there. You get the full preview of the site. You can click here and actually get like the full, full preview. I don't know why that's not working, but either way, you can see the full preview here. And you can actually switch the device to mobile, which is so helpful, right? Because even though you can't go, I don't think you can go and view the live site, you can see it on mobile and desktop. So that's why you would want to view the live site. So really, you get the same benefits. And this is super helpful for me when I'm designing high converting landing pages, because all of the landing pages on here are actually high converting. They're actually pages that convert. They work well in real world scenarios, and they're not just nice designs like the Dribble and Bento Grids ones and all that. So yeah. Um, there's a load of other stuff in here. We're mainly here for the inspiration. You've got the component library. There's templates, there's places to learn, and there's a load of tools, free logos, mock-up generator, and stuff like that, if you think you want to play around with it. And the link to all this stuff is going to be in the description. Now, the next one, Duda. Now, Duda, again, is just getting inspired by real sites. I'm not going to talk too much about this one. It has a lot of the same benefits as the others. And again, it's just getting inspired by real life sites. Like, you can come on here. Look at that, that's cool. Find a site you like. But if you wanted to click on this and go in, you get the full preview of the website. There, are some, there is some nice stuff here to be fan. And you obviously you can just give it a whole look and you can go to the site here to actually view the entire site yourself, see it live, see it on mobile view and all that kind of stuff, right? So that's Duda, just cross that out. Next one after Duda is webinteractions.gallery. Now this one is sick. I actually discovered this one pretty recently and I've been using it loads because at Island Web Design, we love to focus on interactions and animations. They just add a whole nother level of prestige to the site. And as long as they don't become your main goal and your goal isn't just to have nice animations and your goal is still to have a high converting website that is amplified by animations and interactions, then this is exactly where you should be looking. So if we just come here, web interactions gallery, all of these videos, like if you hover over them, 
you actually see the interaction. Look at that. That's done with a shader, right? So you can do that with FreeJS. Um, I'm actually going to leave a link in the description to a sick UI kit we have, which includes a load of shaders and different sliders and all that kind of stuff. So I'd recommend checking that out. But yeah, you can come in here, you can check out all these sick interactions. And then yeah, we can hit play on the video. We can see the animation and it just means that we can actually like not copy these things. But again, I'm going to throw in a great tip here. And that is that good designers copy, great designers steal. I told you guys, art is creating stuff from scratch. Design is collating a load of other styles that you've seen elsewhere, which is actually stealing depending on who you ask. Great designers steal. That's how you get the best results. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. If you want to get more free value like this from me, you can sign up for my free newsletter on the Island Web Design website. I'm just giving away the value at this point, sharing everything I'm learning building this web design agency. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe for more. Now let's move on. We've got minimal.gallery. This again is a massive gallery of inspiration and there's, you can filter here by all of the different types of websites. So portfolio, pricing, startup, single page, agency. So as I said, you can filter through all of the different types of site here and the main goal here, the main like purpose of this site, is minimal websites. Like, there's so much minimalism going on right now. Uh, there are a load of different styles out right now that are like the opposite of minimalism. We have a load of like neo-brutalism and a load of maximalism and all that. But at the same time, minimalism is kind of one of those evergreen things. It's always going to be in style and there's always going to be a market for websites like minimal.gallery where you can actually go and find like sick minimal designs. So yeah, you can come on here, look at all the different inspiration. Again, you can sponsor, submit your work. Um, you can also buy domains on here and stuff like that, I think. Yeah, yeah, you can receive a weekly digest via email. I don't know if that's actually relevant to the domains, but I'm pretty sure what's happening here is you can buy domains um, and they're usually .io domains and stuff like that. Um, so that's minimal.gallery. Next one is nicelydone.club. Now, the sick thing about this is there is just like, a, like the, I'd say this site has more stuff than Dribbble. You can look at web apps, you can look at mobile apps. And the actual sick thing here, let's go at the top here, let's just close this chat. We've got apps, so we can obviously go through here and look at all the apps. I think it is heavily focused on web apps, although there is, there is loads of stuff here. But not only can you just go through apps and again here, search for all the categories, but you also have screens. So you might say like, oh, plans and pricing, plans and pricing, team setting. So it's basically giving you, taking all of the individual components, which as you can see up here, they have a components library and using those components to build out entire screens, which are they're, they're then they then show you the screens and show you which components make up that screen. And then you have user flows, which I think is extremely valuable. And this, like, look what it says here. This is a user flow con for converting issue to project. This is one for updating issue assignee. So you can literally come here, type in the user flow, like the process that you're trying to get your user to go through, the journey you're trying to take them on, and actually find other people that have taken their users on the same journey and get inspired by their journey, see what worked, what caused drop off, and what actually gets the users to stay till the end of the journey. So this is super beneficial. And we're actually gonna get into more ones like this as we go along, where it's not just inspiration, where you're looking at something nice, you're actually being inspired on like how to convert, how to get the users to go on the correct flow through the site, and all of the actual valuable elements of design that aren't the aesthetic look of it. So anyway, move on to the next one. I'm not going to bother looking at a lot of the components and stuff because all of these places have component libraries, well, most of them anyway. So next one is mobbin.com and mobbin is mobile apps, basically anyway, as you can see here, 1,069 apps, 347,000 screens and 68,000 flows. So again, if you just scroll down here, load a sick mobile apps, right? So let's say this here is a welcome screen. You want to look at welcome screens. Oh, that's not a link. Okay, so now we get down here. So we've got flow videos, prototype mode, Save to collections, copy to Figma. So these are basically all flows and all journeys that the user goes on very often. These are like the common flows that happen in mobile apps and you can basically just be inspired and this is actually gonna help you send your users on the correct direction through the site, which is people's biggest problem a lot of the time. The users land on the site, there's no clear direction, they're not sure exactly where they landed. So if you can come onto websites like this and actually start to get inspired by world-class designers who are actually thinking about the flows and the direction they're sending their users on, this is gonna level up your designs instantly. Move on to the next one. This is Collect UI. And this is kind of just as it sounds. I'm not going to talk too much about this one. This is just a massive collection of UIs, yeah? So you can just go through here. And I found on here, there's a lot of these websites you will notice similarities. You'll be like, oh, I saw that website on Dribbble, and then I saw that one here, and then I saw it here. You don't see a lot of the same websites on this one. This one seems to be a lot of original websites. There's some illustrations and stuff on here for the graphic designers. And then, for example, down here, 404 page. Let's say we want a 404 page. We can come in here and there's so many examples of 404 pages. There's some mocked up on mobiles. There's some that are like actual just full screen. There's some that are like, you know, mobile interactions, web interactions. There's all sorts of different stuff here, animations and all that. Massive library of inspiration. Move on to the next thing. This is called to inspiration. And I think this one's really cool because as you can see, you land here. 
you don't get presented with all the inspiration straight away like you do with the other websites. You basically just choose between logins, sign-ups, pop-ups. You can just pick one, go in. I say I want pop-ups. Here's a million pop-ups for me to pick and choose from. Next one, details matter. Now, I actually really like this. Don't know if we're gonna have an internet problem here. Creating designs that will blow your mind. And this is really about the details, micro interactions and all that kind of stuff, which is actually something that inspiration websites are lacking in, is like being able to search for specific micro interactions and all that. And you can create collections here if you wanna create a collection of certain interactions for this site and a, a collection of certain interactions for this project. You can do all that here. So I just scroll down, look at all these cool interactions. Bookmarking interaction, loading animation, Here's one for like um, one way and return trips on a flight app. So let's just click into this here. Is it going to let us click into them? I don't think you can click into them on this website, but either way, you can see all the interactions here. There's loads of stuff to be inspired by. And again, like I said to you earlier, this is the kind of stuff that will level up your designs, not just like designing nice websites that aren't actually practical. Anyway, onto the next site. Dark mode design. This probably could have been grouped in with the Bento Grids one because this again is an inspiration website for a specific style. Dark mode so popular. By the way, guys, you're probably all going to hate me for this, but I'm actually a light mode user. I actually get people in my comments all the time saying I must be like mentally ill or a serial killer because I use light mode. So maybe this website isn't for me, might be for you. But for some reason, people like dark mode. So if you like dark mode, go through here, find a load of dark mode sites. If you're like me and you like light mode, don't go here. There's no light, there isn't a light mode dot design either. So hoverstate.es, I imagine the fact that this is .es is probably a Spanish website, but regardless, like design is like multilingual, right? Is that the correct word, multilingual? Design is multilingual, design is, it doesn't matter what nationality you are for design, right? So in reality, even if these websites are all in Spanish, there's still some really nice shit here. Appshots.design, this is UX research made quick and easy, and this is like flow-based again, but way more UX-based, like this is literally like, come on here, see the flow, see the journey people are going on, but this is mainly for design research rather than being inspired. This is to kind of learn what flows work in what situations and all that kind of stuff. And it's actually pretty cool here, they have the little Figma arrows, you know, like when you, you know, like if you and your colleague are in Figma together and you can see their mouse, kind of like that, so. Next one is Product Hunt. Product Hunt maybe isn't inspiration, but this is so worth going to check out. Product Hunt is basically where you can launch your new product. So if I have a new website, let's say I create a new website that sells shoes and I wanna launch, I can go and put this on Product Hunt. People can upvote it, comment on it, share it around. And so many successful startups and successful web and app based ideas have been launched on Product Hunt. So you can go here, you can see which businesses have done well and which ones haven't. You can look at their UI and UX and kind of work out, oh, well this one did good and it had good UX. So I reckon it did well because of this reason. This one's got a load of down votes and didn't seem to manage to launch and they did this. So this was probably because of that. And you can kind of learn what's actually going to do well. And this is the most real world application out of anything because these are literally the whole product, the website and everything built around it rather than just the design, right? Next one is ecom.design. Um, another thing that all these sites are lacking in is e-commerce inspiration. If you search for e-commerce stuff, you're gonna find a load of old shitty Shopify templates and you're gonna find a load of normal websites blended in. Here, it's all e-commerce stuff. It's well worth going to check out. And if you tie in this e-commerce stuff with the user flow stuff, all of a sudden you have a super high converting shop that makes a shitload of money with a wow nice design. It's fucking well worth it. Next one is Adfolio. Um, I actually spoke about this, I was chatting to Max about this before because I think this is so valuable. This is, inspiration for Facebook ads. And I'm telling you now, people's number one problem with Facebook ads is you've got good designers that design good ads, but they don't understand how to make it convert. They don't understand how to talk to the user correctly and actually get them to want what they're selling, right? So if you can come and get inspired by sick ad designs, this literally breaks down why this ad is good and why it converts. So this is so, so valuable. And if you're trying to get clients or market yourself online, go and look at this. Or if you, you've got retainer clients and you're trying to get them leads online or whatever, I couldn't stress it enough. Go and look at this, learn what works and what doesn't, right? So that's Adfolio. Then we go on to really good emails. Same thing applies here for emails. People don't even realize this, but e-commerce companies credit like 80% of their revenue to their email list. Email lists are so valuable, right? Because if you're on Instagram and you have 200,000 followers and Instagram shuts down, you just lost all your followers. Bye-bye, followers gone. They're literally like probably never gonna hear you again unless they remember your username, which they definitely won't. They probably don't even remember that they followed you because who remembers everybody in their follow list? But if you have 200,000 email followers, and Instagram shuts down or whatever, even if email shuts down, you still have their email address. Those are your followers, you own them. And actually when it comes to advertising, brands are so much more willing to pay for people with big email lists, like to pay to be sponsorship and all that kind of stuff, because you have a big list of people that open your emails, trust you and care about what you have to say. It's basically invaluable. So come here, you can look at all the top high converting emails. Again, tie this in with the user flows thing and actually build some really high converting user flows that are gonna make your business money. Next one. 
500pix.com. Now this, these are just bonus ones. We might not even include this in the video, by the way, but these are just like inspiration for photos. People's art direction on sites is really lacking. Ours was lacking for a while. This was something I've learned, that the art direction on the site needs to match up. If you've got images with all green hues in them, don't then use a random image with an orange hue. You see these two here? Like I wouldn't use these kind of images everywhere and then stick that there and that there because they're out of color. The art direction doesn't match up. So you can go to these photo websites, get inspired by them, and then kind of go look at other of the inspiration websites I've shown you and look at the photography and kind of work out, oh, they did this with the art direction, they did that with the art direction. It's really valuable. And there are some other ones for photos here. We've got Flickr, I'm sure everyone knows that. Show Reels, this is a sick one because this is technically a video inspiration website, but it's based around websites. So a lot of the really high quality animations that you see on awards and stuff, they aren't just GSAP animations where you just go and translate X. 300 pics or whatever yeah they're actually like full-blown videos that were made in after effects and then the video is like synced to your scroll or whatever with 3js it's a pretty complex process and this here motion design is what that's called by the way is like actual motion design animations you can go here you can look at high quality motion design see how it was used on the web and be inspired by really high quality animations that are kind of as good as the awards website but they're not just all the same shit that everybody's seeing on the awww awards website so anyway next one branding style guides now i'm not a brand designer just slap the mic actually so you probably hear a crackle then but um i'm not a brand designer don't really design many logos for people we have designed people's logos we actually have some really popular videos where we design some people's logos but we are not island logo design we design websites but this stuff is still beneficial because when you're designing someone's website especially if they come to you without a brand guide you're deciding their colors you're deciding their messaging their tone of voice their fonts or you might even just be re reworking their existing brand they might have picked some fonts and colors when they first started and you're just trying to rework it a little bit so all of this stuff is beneficial and branding actually for me is so similar to marketing it's using to design to solve a problem communicate an issue and like basically convert users right so i would say that branding and advertising goal wise are actually very similar next one navbar.gallery this is just a sick place for loads of inspiration for nav bars um you can tend to get into a habit of just using like a few nav links at the top with a button and a logo all the nav bars start to look the same a little drop down menu on mobile but here there's some sick mega menus i mean look at all this stuff it's like well that's a little normal drop down but there's some sick mega menus in here i mean look at that that's a cool menu that's the kind of menu i actually want to do on our new site so you can come in here and actually get inspired by some sick unique nav bar designs next one 3D website stop design. This is sick because it's just a big library of 3D websites, loads of 3JS stuff. And I'm actually going to give you another free tip here is if you guys want to learn 3JS, which is like all the cool shaders and 3D stuff that you see online, Bruno Simon 3JS Journey is a great course to take. It costs like $97 and I'm not sponsored by Bruno, by the way. I'd just like to shout him out here. Um, so go search Bruno Simon 3JS Journey. It costs like $97 and he's going to teach you everything you need to know about 3JS in React and everything. Like I said, 3D design. And if you can learn from Bruno Simon's course, even better because Bruno is one of the best 3JS designers and developers in the world. His portfolio is amazing. I don't know if you guys have seen it actually. You know that portfolio and it's like a game with a race car and you drive it around and all that? That's Bruno's portfolio. So it's a super, super valuable course. Now, I swore to you guys that you're going to get a secret tip at the end. And this is something that has leveled up my design game immensely because this is something that people are lacking massively. And that is page flows. This is literally an inspiration website for flows through a page, the, direct your, the, the direction you're sending your user on, the journey they're going through the site. Because if you've got nice designs, even if you've got like like practical designs that can actually be used. If you don't understand the direction that you're sending your users through the site, then when they go on this imaginary direction through the site, because they are gonna go on a direction through the site, they're not gonna end up where you want. They're not gonna be able to convert. And the reason this is my number one tip that's actually gonna level you up as a designer is if you can take all of the inspiration that I've given you today, become inspired by all of these sick websites and actually create real world effective designs. And then you can take these page flows, learn about the journey you're sending your user on and how that contributes to getting them to the end goal. And then you can tie these things together and start actually solving these problems for your clients, building them high converting websites that actually make them money and get them customers. And all of a sudden you've gone from a mediocre designer to an S tier designer with just a few simple tips. So this and all of the other stuff that I'm teaching you guys on my YouTube is what's contributed to Island Web Design being so successful and us being so well known for creating high converting designs that work in a real world application and actually solve problems. So if you found this video helpful and you want to learn more real world tips from the owner of a real web design agency, then make sure you subscribe for more and you can sign up for our free newsletter and get a load of free value on our website. So go check that out as well.